Welcome to episode four of the Yield Pyramid. Today we start on the second layer of the pyramid now that our foundation is complete. The first building block of our second layer we are going to cover genetic selection as well as the planter pass. Now the genetic package that you select for your farming operation is critical to your success. Here in Northeast Iowa alone we have over 30 corn genetic platforms as well as 30 different soybean varieties for you to choose from. So therefore you can see it's critical to rely on your Pioneer sales representative to help you match the best genetic package for your farm. It's kind of like going to the draft every year and trying to select the best players. We know that every sports team needs different types of athletes to fill the different positions. It's no different with your farming operation. Every farm and field is different and therefore you need to look at the different players within the Pioneer Genetic Package to make sure your team is successful every growing season. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at some of the things that we at Pioneer really try to stress to our customers that are important when making their genetic package decisions. And one of the things that we kind of bring to the top is maturity. And as we go ahead and look at some of the statistics there, we know that approximately one and a half to two bushels per acre increase per CRM as we move to fuller season corn. Now soybeans, we can see a very similar yield increase as we go to fuller season soybean varieties. Now, one of the things to keep in mind, obviously, is harvest grain moisture, logistics, your drying capabilities. But one of the ways to increase yield without really changing your seed cost is to try to maximize the fuller season products that fit for your farm. The next thing that you really need to take a look at is your disease package. Every farm and field that you have has a unique disease history to it. So whether that's Goss's wilt, tar spot, gray leaf spot, gray leaf spot northern corn leaf blight and corn, or things like white mold or sudden death in soybeans, we really need to ensure that we're placing genetics on those farms that have a strong resistance to those particular diseases. Now you'll see on the list, I didn't put down any of our seedling diseases. And one of the reasons for this is over the last couple years, there's been huge advancements in Pioneer's Lumigen seed treatments to treat some of our early season diseases like Pythium, Phytophthora, Rhizoctonia. And despite having some really challenging growing seasons the past few years as far as establishing stands, we really haven't seen much for seedling diseases because of those new seed treatments. Now one of the things that we need to discuss at the time of seed purchase is whether or not you're going to be using a fungicide on your corn. The decision for fungicide use needs to be made at the same time so we can ensure that the genetics that you're planting will or won't have a fungicide on them and we can help you make the appropriate decisions. We do lots of tests and determine which one, which one of our hybrids respond to fungicides and which ones give a lower chance of being profitable on your fungicide application. So be sure to have that disease conversation with your Pioneer sales rep. Now drought tolerance for some of you is incredibly important and I'm sure all of you know that Pioneer over the last five to ten years has introduced many Aquamax drought tolerant hybrids. Now the one thing that has happened over the last year, five to ten years with technology has been the fact that we now have variable rate seeding. So we can go from a 34,000 seeding rate down to a 24,000 seeding rate in those areas that are more drought stress and improve really the drought tolerance of any hybrid. Just because there's fewer plants there there's going to be less water use so that's going to improve the drought tolerance. However, if you are looking at a situation where you're extremely water limited year in, year out, that's where we want to place one of our Aquamax products. I did just briefly mention about variable rate seeding in corn. Our recent research in variable rate seeding on soybeans has found almost just the opposite of what we found in corn. In the lower yielding areas in our soybean fields, we have actually found a yield increase and an increase of profitability by increasing the seeding rate. So it's kind of a complete 180 degree turn from how we think about corn variable rate seeding. So I really encourage you to talk to your Pioneer sales rep or local agronomist about variable rate seeding your soybeans. 
Last but not least is your trait package. And while choosing the proper insect and herbicide resistance is important, we don't want this to trump our other decisions. Sometimes as new technologies come along, we see people jump to the latest and greatest technology without giving much thought to the other things that we discussed in the genetics. And we really need to make sure that the genetics fit because there are many different ways that we can manage things like weeds and insects. So the final thing is be sure for every corn hybrid that you are planting from Pioneer, talk to your local Pioneer sales rep and ensure that you know what the optimal seeding rate is. Pioneer agronomists conduct hundreds of seeding rate trials across Iowa every growing season. These trials are full length of the field and they go over the same variable conditions that we know that the, our products can be placed in. So take the time, know what the proper seeding rate is, and be sure to take the time during the planting season. Take that extra two or three minutes to change that rate, and it can give you a great return on your investment for that particular amount of time. All right, now we're gonna move on to essentially the planter pass, if you will. Now, I'm not gonna go through a planter clinic here, but the one thing that I do wanna say is that much of the new technology that is available for planters, things like variable rate seeding, um, seed placement, seed singulation, controlling your planter as far as down pressure, row cleaners, and the different closing systems that are out there have proven themselves in the field. And I really encourage you to determine what's your limiting factor out in your field and see if there is a new planter technology that can help you with that limiting factor. So one of the first questions that you'll see on the list that we often get is, what's the appropriate temperature to start planting, whether it's corn or soybeans? Now the first thing that we always say is the thing that's the most critical is to ensure that the soil conditions are fit. Over the years, 50 degrees has commonly been thrown out as a temperature in which we wanna start activities. Improvements through genetics and seed treatments has essentially allowed that temperature to go down to about the mid 40s. So we say now if we're past the crop insurance date, soil conditions are fit, and we're looking at the mid 40s and a warming trend, we can go ahead and start planting and feel very comfortable that we're gonna establish a good stand. Another thing that we have found over the years in stand establishment issues and uneven emergence is the time between the last tillage pass and when we have our planting pass. We have found over the years, if you leave at least 24 hours between the last tillage pass and your planting operation, you'll probably have an increased chance of establishing a successful stand. And the reason for this is that time frame equalizes the temperature and moisture throughout the furrow. So let's think through this just a little bit. When we do tillage, we take the warm, dry soil that's on the soil surface and mix it with cooler, damper soil that's further down into the profile. Now, if you would follow with your planter shortly after that tillage pass, you may be placing some seed in warm soil, some in cool soil, some in dry soil, and some in damp soil. This makes it very hard for the germination process to be equal among all the seeds and therefore have uniform emergence. So keep that in mind. So now if you have 24 hours between your tillage pass and your furrow has uniform temperature and moisture, the next thing that can cause variability in our emergence is seed to soil contact. A seed that's firmly pushed down into the soil will imbibe water more quickly than one that say may have air pockets around it or maybe even has a piece of residue. The reason why this is important is because we need to imbibe a certain amount of water before we start the germination process. If it takes one seed a day or two days to go through this process, in other seeds it may take four or five days, you can see our chances of a uniform emergence have basically been determined within minutes after the planter passes through the field. So one of the ways to check for seed to soil contact Instead of digging straight down to find your seed, I challenge you guys to take a cross section and pull it back of the soil profile and it'll allow you to see the seed trench. And the one thing that you don't want to see in that seed trench is air pockets. And that will change your seed to soil contact. 
The other thing that you don't want to see around that seed is residue. And there's a couple reasons for not wanting to see residue in your furrow. One is if that seed does happen to be sitting next to a piece of residue, it will not imbibe water as quickly as one that's completely surrounded by soil. So that's the first thing. The second thing is if there are large pieces of residue, root balls, corn stalks, and things like that between the seed and the soil surface, that shoot is going to have to try to get around one of those pieces of residue and easily could delay emergence by two to four days. And again, this is something that I'm going to show here that will drastically impact yield. So it all comes down to uniformity. Uniformity in soil temperature, soil moisture, seed to soil contact. And one of the best ways that we can ensure this is the proper planting depth. The deeper in the soil profile that we go, the more uniform the temperature and the moisture is. So I really like people to shoot for at least two to two and a quarter, inch, quarter inches on the corn and for sure an inch to inch and quarter on the soybeans. And we always want to make sure that we're planting into moisture. And again, uniformity is the name of the game. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our last slide. And one of the things that you can do to evaluate the performance of your planting pass is to do what we call the flag test. Over the last five to six years, we've done numerous flag test experiments here in Northeast Iowa, and we've weighed hundreds and hundreds of years. Flag tests essentially consist of you going out and measuring off a certain distance in your field, whether it's a thousandth of an acre or even just five or six feet. Then, once the corn or soybeans start to emerge, go out every 12 or preferably every 24 hours and put a different colored stake for each day of emergence. So every plant that came up on day one, pick a color and flag or stake every one of those. On day two, pick a different color, stake every one of those, et cetera, et cetera, on down the line. This will give you a great visual on how uniform the emergence of your crop is. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that picture. And you can see that every ear and stalk has a different color next to it, which represents a different day that they came out of the soil. You can see that the first two to three colors, the first two to three ears and stalks, look very uniform. After the third day, you can see that the ear size and stalk diameter quickly diminish. What we have found through our studies is that we should shoot for an emergence window of two to three days in our corn in approximately four days for our soybeans. If you can accomplish this, you will stand a better chance of turning every one of those seeds you purchased into a harvestable plant. So what happens when they don't come up on time or we have late emergers? What we need to do is just start digging and determine what caused this. Was it soil compaction from maybe planting too wet or having too much down pressure set on our uh, planter gauge wheels or our closing system? Are we, do we have uneven, uneven seeding depth? Do we have residue in the furrow? Those are the type of things that we need to evaluate so that way we know how to make changes for next year. And again, the residue part, actually your management of residue starts with the combine and your fall tillage. If you're seeing a lot of residue in your seed furrow, you either need to determine, am I gonna leave more on top and just move it aside with my row cleaners, or am I gonna bury it completely below my seed trench? So I'll end with this. For every ear that you can save out in your cornfield could potentially add six to eight bushels per acre of yield with purchasing the same amount of seed. So for every one that we can get up and make sure that it is a viable plant increases your return on your seed investment. If you have any questions on what we've covered in today's episode, be sure to contact your local Pioneer sales representative. From all of us here at Pioneer, Thank you for your business. Be safe, and we'll see you in the fields. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.